Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Today, we're going to take a look at fishing. It's something awesome that you can do while you're waiting for your crops to grow, your items to smelt, or if you want to gather a little bit more food, XP, and potentially get the chance for some treasure. We've got a fishing rod here that we crafted in a previous episode. It's just two string and three sticks to make a fishing rod, so they are very, very cheap. And to start with, all we're going to do is run down to the nearest river, fling the bobber into the water, and see what we get. So right-clicking will cast the bobber out into the water, where it will sit bobbing up and down for a couple of seconds, and you'll see these particles of splashing effects that happen out there in the water. Between 5 and 30 seconds later, something should start to appear from the periphery of this area. We should start to see a trail of particles winding inwards towards the bobber. There they are, and if we right-click, as soon as the bobber dips into the water, we get our first fish, which, surprising nobody, is a cod. Cod end up providing about 50% of the fish that you will catch. There are a few other fish out here as well, such as salmon, puffer fish, and even tropical fish, with a rare chance of getting most of those. The salmon are roughly half as common as the cod, so most of the time you'll just be getting standard fish. Now you'll notice that the durability of our fishing rod has gone down. There we go, we got a salmon for our second fish. This is working out splendidly, actually. And each time you reel the rod in, you lose a durability on your fishing rod, and it's only got 64 durability, so after 64 items, which is, I guess, a stack of items, although they're all going to be different, the rod will break, and you'll probably have to craft another one. Those are the basics of fishing with a fishing rod, and we're actually getting quite lucky with our catch rate here, and we've just picked up our first junk item. So there are various junk items that you can fish up. It's not just fish that will come out of fishing. You actually get a variety of other things. Lily pads are one of those. You can also get things like sticks, leather, rotten flesh, bowls, glass bottles, stuff like that. Basically the kind of junk that you would expect to fish out of a river. But there is also the chance of getting treasure from this as well. If you fish in a wide enough area, which this river seems to fit the bill quite nicely, then you'll end up potentially fishing up things like in Enchanted bows, name tags, saddles, enchanted books, and even enchanted fishing rods that can help you fish up a few extra items. Now, in this case, we're just getting a little bit more salmon, but that's fine. We can also place the lily pad down, just like the lily pads that you find in swamp biomes, and we could even stand on this if we want to get further out into the river. So to go over the mechanics of fishing a little bit more closely, we're on the surface right now. We have the sky directly above us, no obstructions around us, and we're getting fish on a fairly regular basis. Weirdly, we do have a bit more salmon than cod that we've been catching so far, but I think that's just down to chance. It's nothing to do with the fact that we're fishing in a river biome, even though you find salmon naturally swimming around in river biomes. It's more just luck of the draw at that point. But if we were to fish in an area like this, where there is an overhang above the area where we're going to cast the bobber, a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, the fish are going to take about twice as long on average to bite, and the same is true of fishing in caves. Basically, you want to make sure for the maximum catch rate that you end up with sky directly above the bobber. The position of the bobber itself actually determines a lot about the mechanical aspects of fishing, and <laughs> in that case I reeled in too fast and completely lost the fish, so you do need to make sure that the bobber dips down below the water before you reel the rod in. Here we go, we're about to reel in another one, and we have another cod. Fantastic. The other advantage to fishing on the surface is that rain will affect your catch rate. It will actually be possible to catch fish slightly faster if it is raining on the water block that you're fishing in at the time. Is that it? Yep, we got a bowl. But yeah, if it is raining, it's about 20% faster to catch fish. So you might actually want to go fishing on rainy days instead of just standing by the bed and waiting to sleep them away. We just caught a puffer fish, which are a little bit dangerous, actually. You don't want to eat a puffer fish directly because they'll give you the poison and nausea status effects for a little while, and it's actually a pretty intense poison, so you don't want to deal with that right now. But we'll save the puffer fish because there are a couple of things we can use them for later. The other two types of fish are raw right now, but we can put them in a smoker or a furnace and they'll cook down into some food that we can eat alongside our steak. The other general rule to learn about fishing is that the depth of the water matters if you want to encounter treasure. We can just fish in this shallow lake here, where the water is only one block above a surface, and you can even fish in a water source as small as one block wide. I think you might even be able to fish in flowing water, although don't quote me on that, I might need to test that 
a little bit later. And there we go, we got ourselves another cod and some experience as well, by the way. We've been gathering experience this whole time and fishing could be a nice way of getting hold of some XP while you're waiting for some other stuff to come up from the furnaces. But if you want to get treasure from fishing, then the bobber needs to be free of obstructions within a certain area. And usually it's a good idea if you're fishing in a natural environment to fish in deeper water like this area over here to guarantee that those conditions are maximized. Basically the way this works is that the area around the bobber needs to be free of solid blocks within a 5x5 horizontal radius and a 4 block deep radius centered on the bobber. So two blocks above, two blocks down, and two blocks out from the block that contains the bobber. The item you get from fishing will still be randomized, but that random chance includes a chance to get treasure items. Going back to our shallow lake area here, I'm going to make sure that an area of this is fit for fishing, just so you can see a better visual representation of the area the bobber needs. <laughs> and there we go, it's not especially pretty, but if we make sure that the bobber reaches the middle of the pool here, so it's above that block of gravel in the center, it's got two blocks on either side horizontally, two blocks clear above it, and two blocks clear below it. The, the block that it's in and one block below the surface of the water needs to be clear, and hopefully as long as we'd get the bobber over the top of that gravel block every time, we might have a chance of getting some treasure. Of course, with it being one block over here, it's too close to this wall. It's not going to have a chance to give us treasure if we fish something up from here, and yep, it's just going to give us a salmon. So while fishing in smaller, restrictive areas like this is certainly possible, it's usually best to opt to go further afield, find a nice deep river or the ocean, and go fishing there. It's also worth noting that the fishing rod can be used for other things besides fishing, although I'm not certain that we want to try it with these guys. Let's let's see how this goes. So fishing rods can be used to hook other mobs as well. For example, these creepers on the riverbank, if I fling the fishing rod at one of them, it will attach to them, and if I pull it in, the creeper will actually come a little bit closer to me, although I'd kind of prefer if he didn't, to tell you the truth. This does use a fair amount of durability from the fishing rod though because it's not the fishing rod's intended purpose. Right now we've got 43 durability on this fishing rod. Let's see if we can pull this creeper a little bit closer. Now we have 38, so it used five durability because it was hooking into something that wasn't a fish. It's also worth noting that if your fishing rod's bobber attaches to a block in the ground and you have to reel it in, that's also going to reduce the durability a little bit more. So it's usually worth making sure that you've got a large area of water you can and fish in, or alternatively, if you fling your bobber out onto the ground, switch to holding something else in your hand, and the bobber's durability won't decrease because you put the rod away without reeling it in. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's possible to enchant a fishing rod in our enchantment table. I'm going to put this fishing rod in here. It's going to give us the options for unbreaking, unbreaking, and lure two. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Lure is an enchantment which will reduce the amount of time it takes before a fish bites, and every level of this subtracts about five seconds from the wait time. So between lure 1 and lure 3, you're likely to get between 5 and 15 seconds reduction on how long it takes for a fish or whatever treasure item to appear. Which is actually pretty useful because as we've seen, it takes a while for a fish to bite every time. So any kind of reduction in that is going to mean you get more out of fishing because you're going to be reeling them in more. The other significant enchantments we're looking for on fishing rods are luck of the sea, which increases your chance of getting treasure, but makes the time to wait for a catch longer. So in theory, luck of the sea and lure kind of balance each other out a little way, and it's a good thing to have both on a fishing rod if you can get it. Naturally, since a fishing rod has durability, the unbreaking enchantment also applies, and that will mean your fishing rod lasts a lot longer. Right now, I'm going through this fishing fishing rod at quite a pace, but if you have unbreaking on it, it will last about four times as long as with other tools and armor. The last enchantment we could get on it is mending, and mending is an enchantment that I haven't talked about much yet because we haven't really had access to it, but fishing is potentially one of the ways you can get either a mending book or a fishing rod or bow that has mending on it already. Mending is one of the game's few treasure enchantments, an enchantment that can't be obtained through the enchantment table. It has to be either found in a dungeon, fished up from the fishing treasure table, or traded for with villagers. And hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate mending for you later in this episode if we're lucky enough to fish up something that has the effect, but basically what it does is use experience when you gain it from fishing or any other activity to restore the durability on your tools. So a damaged fishing rod like this, if it has 
had mending would be repairing itself every time we fished something up because we gain experience for fishing every time we do it. Since we don't have access to mending through the enchantment table since it's only a treasure enchantment, a lot of people will often resort to fishing as a way of getting the mending enchantment in the early game because as you might expect, having mending on your fortune pickaxe in the very early game is a super good thing because of course when you're mining with fortune you're getting experience from the ores that drop it when you break them and that means your fortune pickaxe, one of the most valuable tools you have, is constantly being repaired as well and there's a chance that it'll never break. We've now fished up a tropical fish and a bone plus a couple of other fish. We haven't seen much in the way of treasure yet because this rod is currently unenchanted and so what I'm thinking about doing is fishing until I have level 30. We might need to craft another fishing rod because this one is already halfway broken and we can enchant a fishing rod with a level 30 enchantment that will hopefully give us a bit more chance of catching some treasure. In the meantime, I'm also going to bring a barrel with me. That seems like an appropriate block for a fisherman. We're going to leave this down here by our fishing spot, which is going to gradually expand with all of these lily pads. We might build some kind of fishing house on this central island, which seems like kind of a fun thing to do. And I'm going to keep track of how many fish and other items we fish up while we're gathering experience and working on our second fishing rod. Well, folks, it's only been a couple of minutes and we have our first treasure item. We've got an enchanted book with power four, and that's a really, really good find, actually. Our bow only has power three, so we could, in theory, use this enchanted book to upgrade our bow or even enchant a future bow if we needed it. And that's only after a couple more fish caught. So even though it's taken a little while to get to this point, the enchanted items have started to flow at this point. It's a good thing to know that we can get treasure from where we're fishing right now. From where we are in this river, you can also see a bunch of live fish swimming around, and you might be wondering why on earth we aren't going for the live fish, or why the live fish themselves aren't going for our fishing rod. And the answer to that is it's not really the way it works. Fishing was a mechanic in Minecraft long before live fish were really added to the game, and the two have never been super compatible. Instead, live fish are content to swim around their environment and completely ignore the fishing rod, and you don't need there to be fish around for you to do any fishing. It is possible to catch live fish though in a number of different ways. First of all, if you wanted to just kill the fish with any other kind of weapon, you can just attack them with a sword, an axe, or, <laughs> or just punching them with your fists if you feel like that. And the fish will die and drop a raw fish item just like the ones we've been reeling in that you can cook and eat later. But if you wanted to catch the live fish themselves and release them somewhere else as live fish, you can do that with a full bucket of water. Simply swim up to them and right click, you'll get the advancement tactical fishing the first time you do that and you'll end up with a fish in a bucket. In this case, we have a bucket of salmon. And if we want to, we can make a little pool over here and we can leave the salmon in it, like so. As, as we release the bucket of water, the salmon is in there and even though it's a flowing water source right now, we can turn that into full water sources and we have a small pool containing one salmon. If we were to drain this pool of water though, say I start to collect all of the water sources like so, the salmon ends up flopping around and will eventually suffocate here on land. So we're gonna catch that back in the bucket and put it back in the river. Once again, remember you need a full bucket of water if you want to catch any live fish. The same goes for any cod or tropical fish or anything that are out there. You can't catch squid, which we're also seeing in the river right now, but buckets can be used to catch other things like axolotls if you find them in lush caves. So if you feel like creating a fish tank in your house then that's how you can catch live fish to put them in the tank and once you place them that way they should not despawn like fish in the wild do so any fish you place from buckets should remain permanent in the world and will be preserved that way although make sure you don't mix fish and axolotls because axolotls are predators and will chase and kill other fish in the same fish tank i think if we build a fishing shack on this island over here we might actually put a fish tank in it that seems like a fun idea well, our first fishing rod is now all the way broken, and we've started to see a bit of a correction in the ratio between the cod and salmon. We got a lot of salmon quite early, but we seem to have now got the amount of cod I was expecting. We got a few puffer fish, one tropical fish, and we have two treasure items now, a powerful book and a saddle. The saddle does count as treasure, even though you'll end up with a great deal of these after a while. You can also find those in dungeon loot chests, and we're going to use one of those later to saddle up a horse and go for a ride in the woods somewhere, I expect, so it's nice to have a saddle at this point in the game. But we need another fishing rod, and we are very close to getting level 30 again, so thinking about it, I might end up cooking some of these fish right now, because the extra XP from that is going to push us a little bit further towards 
to level 30, and then we'll be able to enchant our new fishing rod that much sooner. Since fishing rods are fairly cheap to make, though, one option you have in the early game, as long as you've got access to enough sticks and string, is to just keep making fishing rods until you fish one up that has enchantments. And it is possible to have a fishing rod with all four enchantments on it come up, even though you're just fishing with an unenchanted rod to begin with. So sometimes you get lucky and you just get the best possible fishing rod from a single night's worth of fishing. It's very rare though, so not something you should count on if you already have an enchantment table set up. Well, we just hit 30 levels and the last item we fished up was a tripwire hook. <laughs> Another one of the junk items, but we will look into those a little bit later as well because they have their uses. We are now at 30 levels though, so we should be able to go up to our enchantment table and grab a quick enchantment on one of these. I think we'll go for the maximum enchantment lure 2 and hope that we get a couple of other enchantments alongside that. Fingers crossed for something more out of the enchantment table, but I'm fairly certain that we're just going to get lure 2. Yep, <laughs> sounds about right for this series so far. Not to worry though, once again we could always grindstone the enchantment off, but I think with a slightly higher catch rate we should hopefully get a few more bites here pretty quickly. And what do you know, the first thing we fished up was an efficiency 3 and power 3 book, so it's not possible to get treasures with lure, it's just maybe a little less likely. But this fishing rod is still going to run out of durability pretty fast since it doesn't have mending or unbreaking, so I'm still on the lookout for any other fishing rods that come up that will hopefully improve our chances here. Well our second fishing rod has just broken and it does seem like we got a decent amount of fish out of that one. Obviously some of these are leftover items from the last round, but we did get that enchanted book. We got a couple more junk items in the form of a leather boots and a water bottle. We got some sticks and string as well, but nothing too much to write home about. Mostly fish from that round, so let's hope that the next enchantment on a fishing rod gets us something slightly better and we can get a little more treasure out of the deal. Now that is a lot better. We have two enchantments, no we have three enchantments on this, sorry, we have Unbreaking 3 which I kind of overlooked because the other two are more exciting to me. Lure 2 and now Luck of the Sea 2 as well, very excited by that. We have a much more durable fishing rod with Unbreaking 3 as well and I decided to get myself to 30 levels with one fishing rod and then enchant at a completely fresh one so that we have a better chance of getting some more stuff. So let's see what this can do, but in the meantime I did gather a few more exciting items. We have one more enchanted book which actually kind of blew me away when we got it because we have several enchantments on it. Power 4, Bane of Arthropods 4 and Flame. Flame is the enchantment for bows which allows them to set things on fire and fire flaming arrows at stuff. Bane of Arthropods is the enchantment that deals a little bit of extra damage to spiders. We also got a Nautilus shell which doesn't have a great deal of use to us yet but it will do in future so glad that we got one of those and the rest of that is just the usual junk that we've already seen. But now we have enchantments that will hopefully get us a little bit more treasure. And once again, the treasure is not going to be flying out of the water at us constantly, but with lure, we should hopefully see a few more bites coming in quicker. And with luck of the sea, we should hopefully see a greater proportion of the things we catch being treasure. And now it's even raining, so our fishing skill is going to go into overdrive a little bit here. With lure and rain, we should hopefully have a much higher chance of catching fish. It does potentially make it a bit more difficult to see the fish particles as they approach the bobber, but with any luck, we should hopefully get a couple of nice catches out of this one. And this rain happened after about 10 minutes, during which time I've been fishing pretty much constantly and my rod durability is only down by seven, so clearly unbreaking is doing a lot of work here. There we go, we just fished up an enchanted bow which has one durability left but power three. We could combine that with our existing bow to combine the enchantments and upgrade that to power four. So that's something we can keep in mind for the near future. And that's what we were looking for all along. We have a fishing rod with unbreaking three, mending, and luck of the sea too. So that's going to be the perfect thing to combine with our current fishing rod and all we would need would be an extra lure to enchantment to complete the whole thing. Let's see which way round this works best in the enchanting table. That's going to be pretty costly though and we're only really gaining an upgrade for luck of the sea. By combining luck of the sea 2 twice we end up with luck of the sea 3 
and we're adding mending to the fishing rod, but it's going to cost us 24 levels. So potentially it might be a little bit cheaper if we repair the mending fishing rod first. And to do that, all we need to do is fish with it. Because if I throw my bobber out here and we get a little bit of XP, you'll notice that the durability on that rod has just increased a little bit. Not only that, but we fished up another fishing rod <laughs> that has Unbreaking 3. So right now, Luck of the Sea is really working out for us. And while it's raining, we'll be able to catch fish even faster, even though this rod doesn't have lure, which will allow us to repair all of the durability until the rod is fully mended. While we're fishing with this rod, though, while the mending effect still has to repair durability on the rod, you'll notice that we don't get any XP going to our levels bar throughout this process. It's all going to repair the tool that I've got in my hand. And the same would go for any armor that I have equipped with the mending enchantment. The mending enchantment would take all of the XP and put it towards Towards mending the durability on my armor before it put it towards my levels. But the repair of the fishing rod is going very well. We're up to 34 durability already and we just fished up a name tag. So we're going to store that here with the rest of our fishing loot. We'll put the unbreaking rod in there as well and the good rod that we were using earlier can be on standby for the minute. And after a couple more minutes, our rod is fully repaired. So let's see how that's affected the cost of combining these two. It has taken it down a couple of levels when we put them this way round, because this rod is no longer in need of repairs. It's just the cost of combining them. But that's still 26 levels compared to 24 levels this way round, because this rod unfortunately does need repairing. So at this point, we really have a choice to make. Do we want to spend all of those levels combining these two fishing rods when so many of the enchantments already overlap? Or do we want to just go for a lure enchantment on a book or on a different fishing rod that we could potentially add to this for less enchantment cost. We have Unbreaking 3 coming up in the table right now, so that's not really going to be of any help to us. It might be possible to get an enchanted book with Lure 3 though. And we do have a Luck of the Sea 1 book in here, although that's not going to be of much use to us considering that we need to combine two of the same level of enchantment to upgrade the level. So to get Luck of the Sea 3, we do have to add two Luck of the Sea 2 enchantments together. Having said that, the enchantment table is giving us a Luck of the Sea 1 here for two levels. We could maybe do that and that's just giving us that enchantment very good and we don't have a lore coming up on here at all but we could combine those two books to get luck of the c2 and upgrade this entire rod to luck of the c3 we're doing that for four levels cost but then when we put this in the enchantment table it only costs us seven levels and we're getting the enchantment fully upgraded there so that might be a little expensive still, but it's certainly less expensive than straight up combining both of these. Because this one has already been combined a couple of times, the enchantment cost goes up a little extra and is completely out of the range that we can afford right now. But this rod is now also maxed out for treasure hunting. It will fish up more treasure than any other rod, although unfortunately it won't fish up treasures quite as fast because of the lack of lure. So in theory, if we put lure on this, it will save us time on catching those treasures. There is always a chance that we might end up fishing up a lure three book at some stage, so I'm willing to give that a try. And I think even though the rain is gone, we can spend a little bit more time fishing out here with our luck of the sea rod and see what we end up getting. But I've rambled on about fishing for long enough at this stage, and I think we're going to leave the Fishing Shack build for a separate video. But that's for now going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you enjoyed this guide to fishing, and I hope you have fun and good luck fishing in your own worlds. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.